Hey everyone, Kevin Dunn here again. I'd like to answer a question for you all today. As you can see, I went a little bit old school today with the notepad because electricity is down, so I'm hoping the camera will last and this only takes one take. So this question comes from Ben from howtolearnabout.com. He says, I would love to know the best resources for learning how to develop WordPress plugins and themes. Okay, this is quite a common question now because WordPress has become so profitable. There's a lot of companies, a lot of individuals that are making hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars a year. So, if you want to understand how to develop a WordPress, you need to understand how WordPress works. You need to understand the building blocks of WordPress. And there's five things. There's HTML, CSS, PHP, JavaScript, and MySQL. Now, HTML and CSS are used to structure and style your pages. I mean, if you've built any websites before, you would obviously know HTML and CSS. PHP is perhaps the most important language to learn. It's what's used for functions. It's what's used for manipulating data in database, for redirecting users, for calculations, for everything. It's all down to PHP. JavaScript is used for a lot of browser things, you know, cookies and redirecting users and whatnot. And all information on a WordPress website is stored in a MySQL database. So you need to understand MySQL if you want to develop themes and plugins because your themes and plugins will be manipulating data on a database, it will be changing settings, it will be changing posts and links and settings and whatnot. So you need to understand MySQL. So those things again, five things, HTML, CSS, PHP, JavaScript and MySQL. So the question is perhaps not how to become a WordPress developer but how do you learn those five languages? For me, if you're young enough, I would say university is the best route to go down. If you're just coming out of high school, I would go down. I would go to university, choose a computer or software related course that has a lot of languages that are in the course. You're going to have a structured course, you're going to have a teacher helping you with things and you're going to have a lot of colleagues and friends that will maybe help you and support you throughout it and you're going to meet a lot of like-minded people. I realise though that university or college is not always the best option for a lot of people or even a viable option. I was lucky enough, I went to university twice and both times it was free and I had a grant to support me. I still had to work and things but I mean the grant they gave me a few thousand pounds a year to so support me during university. But I realise that's not how it works in a lot of other countries. Going to university is a big decision, it costs tens of thousands of dollars or pounds a year. It can be very expensive and put you in debt for years which is not something that's always, the, you know, it's not always the right thing to do. So. University, if you can't go to university, there's other um, areas that you can look into. One of them is online courses on night school. Night school, is, it, I would say, is a good option for a lot of people. You know, if you've got a full-time job and you can afford to go two or three times a week to night school, I would say that's a good option. Those of you who have got commitments for family, kids, house, job, that's perhaps the route you want to go down. But there's also online courses. There's companies like Udemy, Learnable.com, Treehouse. They've got all these uh, website development type courses, there's hundreds of them, thousands of them online. The prices range from perhaps even $10 to like several hundred dollars. And the courses will be structured, then they'll have videos, they'll have code examples. Be aware, however, from what I've seen from doing reviews and things, quality does not always match the price, you know. So don't think that if you're paying several hundred dollars, it's automatically a better course than one that's $20 because it's not. There's a lot of people, a lot of companies and individuals marketing the courses and they're doing it through affiliate marketing so they're bumping the price up to give a bigger commission to the person promoting it. So be aware that paying more money for a course doesn't necessarily mean that it's a better course. What I would do is look at reviews and recommendations etc if you do want to go down that route and if time is a big issue for you but money is not, you know, if, you've, if you're successful, if you're a bit older and you know, I'm 35 years old so if you're my age with a family and you've got a good wage, but you don't have a lot of time, you might want to do an online course that you can do at home, and you don't care if it's a few hundred dollars, you just want the best thing, that, you know, something that's efficient and effective and doesn't take up a lot of your time. But for me, I think there's better routes to go down. You know, I, I learned C plus at university, and then five years later I went back and I learned Java, so that helped me learn PHP. But I learned HTML from one website. There was one website, I can't remember the name of it, but it had like, 15 different chapters, I just broke down HTML into 15 different chapters and I, with, within a week I was building websites online. 
But when I started learning CSS and JavaScript, etc., I turned to books. Now, books, for some reason, I don't understand why more people don't recommend books to learn coding and to learn how to develop for WordPress, because for me, it's a I think it's the most effective way and perhaps the most cost effective way. If you look at a course online, it's about $100. $100 can get you several books from Amazon that are, you know, that's that thick, that's a reference, that's structured, that's got everything you need to learn about a language. So $100 can get you almost like a catalogue of books, get everything that you need. Now I'm in Columbia at the moment, but if we're back in my office back in Scotland, I've got a little bookshelf and I've probably got a dozen or twenty or so books on from SitePoint and from WordPress about PHP, CSS, HTML, everything, all these references. I don't use them much now, but from time to time I will check them. And I do believe books are one of the most effective ways of learning how to program because it's so easy to just sit there and look at examples and then try it out for yourself. If you can get the digital form of a book, I would do that also because it's handy to look on your smartphone or your tablet or on your computer and look at reference wherever you are in the world and look at the books and reference it if you're, if you're having difficulty. So, once you've learned those five things, HTML, CSS, PHP, JavaScript and MySQL. If you spend time learning those things and you, and you feel you've got a good understanding, then I would look towards WordPress. Now, here's how I learned, I mean I'm not a coder, but here's how I learned how to kind of modify themes to do what I want to do and how I can manipulate things for my own websites. I, I would install WordPress locally or install it on a test website online and just hide it from search engines. Just register a cheap domain if you don't have one, $10 a year and just upload WordPress there. I prefer uh, registering it online because it means that I can access it from wherever I am, whatever computer I am and I don't have to go back to the same computer. But just get a, a WordPress installation that you can mess about with things. Install like a dozen or so themes, install like a dozen or so plugins and start looking at how things work, what things do, you know, what these functions, you'll see the same functions being used throughout themes and plugins. Now, at this point, I would turn towards WordPress.org and look towards the codex. The WordPress codex is a complete WordPress reference. It's from the makers of WordPress and it's got everything you need. It's got references for every function, every template tag. It's not exactly the best organized uh, reference in the world. Sometimes it, it seems a little bit backwards, but everything is in there if you look. And if you keep doing that, going back and messing things around and then checking back with the, with the codex, to what, what, what does this function do, go to the codex, you'll see, oh, it does this. And then check for the template tags, etc. <coughs> Excuse me. Now at this point as well, what I would do is, if you need a little bit of extra help, I would maybe go back and then look at the WordPress books again. There's a lot of great books on Amazon, you know, about plugin development, theme development. But there's some one-off books you'll find off online, The Tower of WordPress, and one that I would personally recommend is Digging Into WordPress by Chris Coyier and Jeff Starr. I purchased this book years ago. It's available in print and in digital form. And every time WordPress is updated, a couple of weeks later, they release an update to the book that reflects that. And it's got a lot of, it's got everything that you need to know how you understand themes and plugins. It's, for me, it's one of the best things to get, an, best books available to get an understanding of how WordPress and themes and plugins work. So I would highly, highly recommend Digging Into WordPress. At this point as well, if you want to take things forward, I would also recommend looking at some of these courses online. I mean, this one's on Learnable, Udemy, Treehouse, and all these kinds of stuff. I'll, I'll put some um, links below, some useful references for you all below. Um, Pippin Wilson has one at pippinsplugins.com. He's a fantastic plugin developer and he's got a course that shows you how to become a plugin developer. So you might want to look at how what these courses can offer and the price them and see if you need to go down that route. But I think if you can learn from the codex and from your WordPress website and learn from just messing things around and perhaps pick up a couple of books from Amazon, I think that would give you 99% of what you need. What you may find trouble with is when you do reach a kind of brick wall and you're unsure what to do, this is when I would turn to discussion forums. You know, there's support forums on WordPress.org obviously. But there's also places like Stack Overflow, Danny Web, and to plug my own forum, riseforums.com. And these, these forums, you can go and ask a question and say, why is this not working or how do you do this? And more experienced developers will help you address the issue, help you fix the problem and point you in the right direction. So to summarise again, 
If you want to develop for WordPress, what I would do is learn HTML, CSS, PHP, JavaScript, MySQL, get an understanding of these languages, and then move towards WordPress. Once you understand these things and you've got a good understanding and you can develop little websites, then move towards WordPress and then look at WordPress and go, what do these functions mean? What do these thing, what, uh, functions and template tags do? Look at that and then you'll get a good understanding because you've got this base here with PHP, CSS, etc. You can now apply it to WordPress. Now, once you've done that, you can start messing about. You can start downloading plugins and messing about changing things and you know, the, one of the most common ways is that you'll download a plugin from WordPress and then just change it a little bit, make some modifications to it and then upload it yourself under a different name. If you look in the, the WordPress.org plugin directory, there's a lot of plugins like that that are just simply variations of plugins that have been dropped or, you know, they've added extra functions to it. So, I highly recommend going down that route and trying different things that way. If there's any developers out there, I'd love to hear from you. Please leave a description, uh, a comment below. And, below the description of these comments and please leave a, a comment below let other people know how you learned because I think that's something that other people will find very useful I hope you've enjoyed watching this and if so please do subscribe and thanks again to Ben for the question thanks guys take care